cutting. Um, we're going to do this as a bent to straight knee outer hamstring stretch. This whole sequence could be done with a straight knee, leg across the body a little bit, but it's a pretty impressive stretch to start off with if you do this. You can't possibly do any real movement. So instead, we're going to, well first of all, I'm reasonably tight in the calves still, particularly when I add the whole bending forward part, so I'm not going to get the heel all the way in against the wall, but if you're looser, you could. If when you do the movement, all you're aware of is the upper calf and the back of the knee part, then move the heel out, because we actually want this part of the hamstring to get the main effect of the stretch, okay? So set yourself up. The easiest version would be with the stretching leg, in this case the right leg straight out to the front of its hip. The more you take the leg across the line of the body, the stronger the stretch will be. I'm going to start with my stretching leg as bent as I need it to be so that I can fold my body completely in contact with the thigh. By that I mean my belly, then my ribs, and then my chest. And this is your start position. There's three pelvic positioning things you need to do in this exercise. One is to square up the hips, but what tends to happen when you cue it like that is people collapse to the side. So a better way I've found to cue that is simply squeeze your inner thighs together and that tends to twist you but doesn't move you left or right. Then you need to drop the hip of the stretching leg down because it wants to come up. And then here's the killer, you need to untuck the pelvis. I haven't straightened the knee yet, I'm just setting up the pelvic position. And then we'll do all sorts of things while we're here, little pulses and things. So that's the setup. Off you go. Just need a wall. Or a pole, anything. It's just the ball of the foot that needs to be resting on something. If you're sensitive to pressure on the heel, then pat it up if you need to. Any padding you need so that you're comfortable. Or perhaps not comfortable, but not distracted by pressure against certain things. Now I didn't mention it, but the kneeling knee, have it underneath the hip. If you have it too far back, first of all you're involving the hip flexors and you're going to find it very hard to do those pelvic positioning cues. So have a little bit of a play with how far you think you want the heel in against the wall. Absolutely. If that doesn't result in it only being a calf stretch. Okay, so bend this front leg, the stretching leg we'll call it, as much as you need to so that you can get all of your belly, ribs, chest on that leg. So we're completely winding up the hip end to begin with. And then you're just stabilizing yourself, hands on the floor. Take a big breath in and as you breathe out, rest your body on the thighs. Not just contacting, you're resting it there. Because if you're holding your body away from the leg, which muscles are you using to do that? The hamstrings, we want them to relax. Good. Okay, so this, you don't have to do the pelvic positioning in any particular order, but let's just do it like this. Square the hips up. My suggestion was a squeeze the thighs together cue, but you might find it better to pull the hip of the kneeling leg forward. Even better would be to hook the hip of the stretching leg back. Then drop that hip down, because it always wants to hoik up a little bit. And then untuck. Stick your bottom out behind you. We're rolling the pelvis over. That's the pelvic tilt we need with any stretch, trying to target the back of the legs. Breathe and relax. Good. Okay, now you're going to do a series of gentle knee straightening actions. So make a little effort to straighten the knee and then bend it again. Little effort to straighten the knee and then bend it again. 
your hips press back a little bit as you do the knee straightening action and try to lead the movement with the hip on the side you're stretching. Almost like you're rotating even more as you do the knee straightening action. Is everybody feeling something in that position? Yeah. Did you say you feel nothing, Tom? No, it's still bad. It's still bad not to feel anything. So, well, yeah, that's no sense. Really. <laughs> You're talking for Ben. I'll ask about you, Tom. Okay, let's do two different hamstring contractions. Actually, three. First one, press that front heel straight down through the floor. Straight down through the floor. With the knee better. Yep, well, you might have got it straight, it's unlikely. So just pr without changing the knee angle, press the heel straight down into the floor. And stop, slowly. And now we're doing an attempt to hook the front heel through the floor. It won't move because you've got down pressure on it. And this is to target the knee end of the hamstrings. Good. Stop contracting slowly. Take a breath in. And as you breathe out, rest more on the leg. Tend to lift up a little bit. And go through, in any order you like, those three pelvic positioning cues. Squaring up. Leveling up by dropping the hip of the front leg and untucking the pelvis. If you're looser, add the chest forward cue, like you wanted to get your sternum on the other side of the kneecap. Breathe and relax. Okay, now the third contraction, let's assume you've got the right leg out to the front. How could you sweep the right leg through the floor and out to the right? you've got the left leg, then do the opposite movement. Good. And stop contracting slowly. Take a big breath in. And as you breathe out, can you straighten that knee a little bit more if it's not already straight? And if you've arrived at a position where the knee is straight and the hips are square, and the body's still completely on the leg, then you'd want to reposition with that front leg further across the line of the body. Now another 30 seconds or so, and just try some tiny movements, little left to right, little circles, just move around a tiny bit, leading the movement with the hips. few more breaths in and out there, unless you absolutely need to come out, that's okay. And when you do want to come out, take a deep breath in and hold it as you bend through the front leg again, and then just slowly walk the hands up the wall. And before you do the second side, stand up, walk around. Feel how that feels. <laughs> Does it still work? your hammies. <laughs> Get your face. <laughs> you will not pass out. If you know you've got reasonably tight calves and on the first side there's a very strong pull behind the back of the knee, then I recommend that you pull the heel away from the wall. We don't want that sensation to override the outer hamstring sensation. Some people find with this one the first few times they do it, it's not really an outer hamstring stretch, it's just a hamstring stretch. Hamstring stretch generally, uh, the hamstrings generally are talking to you. That's no problem. 
Okay, so we've got the kneeling knee underneath its hip so that you've got some chance of squaring. We're starting with the forward leg bent so that we can get all of our body in contact with it. That's right. And you'll say to yourself, I'm stretching the inflexes so I have to keep my back straight, and all of that is true. But what it stops, it absolutely stops that capacity to move the pelvis around in a way that the liberty of the be absolutely essential here. Mm -hmm. Moving that back here, back as John is doing now, one is stretching, moving it back, yeah. that is incredibly powerful. Yeah. Yeah, so even if you know to be flexible, start with the knee and knee under its hip, not behind the hip. Okay, so you've got the body not just in contact with the thigh, but fully resting on the thigh. Yeah, if you can, at the very least, the ribs. doesn't matter if the chest is off a little bit. What you don't want is chest on, but the belly's actually off, because that's just a spinal movement. It's full hip flexion we are, and as much contact as possible. That's perfect. Yeah. That's fine. Let's go through the three pelvic positioning things. We haven't even spoken yet about the massive sciatic nerve involvement here. Big neural component to this stretch, even with that knee bent. So, can you square up the hips? Clear means as, as you look at the body from above, if that's not clear, because it could also be mm. hips being square at the floor. Yeah. Here we're trying to take the hip of the leg we're stretching back behind the other one. That's right. It's hell. <laughs> you won't, you won't exactly the squaring up that we did in the earlier piriformis exercise. We tried to roll the hip of the back leg over, here you're pulling it forward and we tried to hook the hip of the front leg back. Then you want to make sure that the hip of the front leg isn't higher than the other one, so drop it down, and then untuck the pelvis, stick your bottom out, and lead with the front leg's glute. <coughs> so you might be aware that one more than the others of those little positioning things is what makes it big for you. It might be the combination of them. Okay, so now you're going to do a series of trying to straighten the leg a tiny bit more and then moving out of the stretch. Just whatever amplitude, whatever speed, I recommend you do it slow just to check that you can control it, that you're not completely cheating because we want to maintain those other pelvic cues and then we're just adding the little knee straightening action. Good. And then pause at the, not where you think you can get maximum straight knee, but just more, more straight. And then in whichever order you like, do those three contractions. One was to press the front heel straight into the floor. One was to hook or try to hook, you won't be able to, try to hook the heel through the floor, like you're trying to pull the heel to the buttock. And then the third one was to try to sweep the front foot down and to the outside of the body. So if it's the left leg, it's down and out to the left. Can't do it, of course, because you've got pressure on the heel and the ball of the foot on the wall. And then take a few deep breaths. Make sure you're relaxing completely on the front leg. And repeat the pelvic positioning cues. Maybe do them in a different order each time. See if that has a different effect. Good. Louise, that form is perfect. Beautiful. Square hips, level hips, bum stuck out. Marcus, that is fantastic because your knee, back knee is way back. Beautiful. 
three or four final deep breaths in. Be really honest with yourself. Are you relaxing or are you just persevering? Relax. The point is, I don't think there's any point in just pushing and pushing and holding and holding if there's no actual relaxing happening there. Yeah, good form everywhere. This one does get better if you're finding it's really horrendous. I remember when I first learned the first version of this like 15 years ago, I couldn't do it at all. It was just the most amazing, horrible sensation ever. And now it's um, slightly less horrible. No, now it's actually pleasant. I enjoy it now. Things. Mm. It's completely. It's a very strong neural component for sure. Yeah. So when you can, come up to your feet and walk around a bit. Yeah. Exactly, it does. Well, at the deeper into the stretch a few weeks ago that Dave and I co-presented, he was doing little movements to try and get into the other external hip rota rotators. And yeah, they did feel quite different. <coughs> okay. So walk around a bit or lie down, whatever you feel like you need to do. 